good morning. Here we are, Thursday, 32nd day of our Lenten journey, our walk to, on the road to the cross. Let's start by lighting our candle, just to remind us we don't walk alone. Jesus is always with us, at our side, walking every step of the way with us. Today's reflection is written by Debbie McMillan. It's titled, If I Had Known. The passage she chooses for this is out of Judges, Judges 18, 5 and 6. Then they said to him, inquire of God that we may know whether the mission we are undertaking will succeed. The priest replied, go in peace. The mission you are on is under the eye of the Lord. And as she reflects on that particular passage, hear the story of, a, of the journey and it will resonate. The first time I tried, I was seven. I sent a poem to the Toronto newspaper. I had called it the dawn of slavery. I had been inspired to write by a guilt, by a gift, a coloring book of white pages with black outlines that outlined the history of Jamaica as an island and as a people. The benefactor was my Jamaican grandmother. Did I mention that I was biracial? Did I mention I was seven? I wrote that poem in pencil, light charcoal scrawls on lined paper with three rings, carefully forming the words like Africa and taken and ocean and pain. When my classmates were writing ball, wall, and tall. Mom sent in the original. She hand wrote my words into a memory book for her keeping. My big words traveled to Toronto in a small white envelope, overstuffed and from overfolded, overfolded contents, taped on every corner with more than one sticker. And I wondered, if they would make the journey from the mailroom to the editor's desk, to the page, to the paper, and then back again to me. I knew about the newspaper because my mother's brother worked for one, but at seven, I didn't want his help. I didn't think I needed it. Who would want to publish an important poem about slavery? A poem that made my white mom cry and made my white teacher proud and confused. I was sharing a journey. I even made it rhyme. But it wasn't time. It was not time. No publication, no rejection lever, letter, just rejection, no resonance. Humble questions were asked on a long distance call on a Sunday night. Discreet intention, discreet inquiry. Answers were, spoken over tea plates, heaped with cold turkey slices and jellied salad at my nan white Nana's birthday a few weeks later. Did you really think a Toronto paper would be stupid enough to think that your daughter was capable of writing that on her own? I'm not even sure if I believe it. That's what he said. What I heard was, I can't trust that your words are your own. You are a poor, brown, illegitimate child. Your white mom wrote those for you. No rejection letter, just rejection and dejection. And the rage that reddened in my mo mother's white face caused her to mutter obscenities, quiet into her white linen napkin, while I sat, brown-headed bowed, surrounded by silence and melting ice, ice cream cake. Share the story of a journey that will resonate. If I had known ahead of time how my uncle would say what he had said, I may have ended writing before I began. Some points to think about from that particular story. Can you recall a time when you were judged harshly by a family member, a system, or a stranger? And what happened? How did you feel? What did you do? Let us close out in prayer. God of mercy, forgive me for the times 
when I have silenced the word and the words of others. I tune my ear to the voice of Christ so that I might hear it speaking in others and in hearing it become more loving. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.